Well, come on in, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. It just so happens that on this Wednesday walkabout, it is on the Day of Love. So in that spirit, I thought I would show you some of the things I am loving in the garden right now. And then some of the things, well, let's just say they wouldn't be getting a Valentine from me. <laughs> so come on back here. Number one, I am loving the fact that it is starting to warm up and I can finally begin to make some sense out of the rest of the backyard that has really been bothering me. It went into the winter in a very incomplete, unfinished kind of way. And now I think I, my vision is complete on what needs to happen here going forward. Starting out with, and I've said this ad nauseum, but I'm gonna say it again. I think one of the reasons I, I, I just kind of couldn't get my head around what direction I wanted things to go in was because the railing is not here yet. And that railing is gonna make a huge difference to kind of ground this space and make it, um, well, just make it look not quite so open and not quite so undefined. So once I get the railing in, which hopefully will happen soon, it's gonna come down this way. That kind of told me what I wanted to do in the remainder of this space to, fiz to finish it out. So I have spoken with Kayla. This may be, by the way, one of the things that some of you had encouraged in the past, I can't remember. And that's that it was still feeling cramped. It was still feeling, um, Oh, just not like what I wanted it to. And so because some bad things happened back here, it gave me some clues on what needed, what needed to continue. Let me put it that way. So the remainder of this area, I think I have shared with you before, we are going to put more of these 12 inch square pavers. We're gonna put more of those. We are also gonna put in more brick. So in other words, this expanse that is soft hardscaped in is gonna go all the way back to the fence. So this entire area is gonna be hardscaped in with the exception of course of where the trees are and things. The other area that is going to be finished out is going to be the area from this set of pavers over to here. So these stepping stones will remain, but it will be finished out with both pavers and with more bricks. So in other words, everything from here all the way back and even all the way up and over to the front of the surround for the air conditioner is going to be um, finished out with both brick and pavers. Does that make sense, Stuart? Okay, now why? Well, number one, we got these soft caress Mahonias in very, very late. So it was not their fault um, that I think they succumbed to those zero degree temps. So because of that, I thought, well, maybe I just won't have anything there at all. I'll continue the brick work back to the front of this surround. I can do that at about the same time we finish putting finials and things on here and I think it will look that much more that much more complete. Then I can maybe put um, a big pot here or something and I don't have to worry about keeping something alive around this perimeter. And I, I think that will be okay. I will confer with Kayla on that but I think that's what I'm going to do. And then two, it will get, kind of complete this area, so I'll just have a couple of pavers that go back around to that side. Then this furniture will be relocated. It will be rearranged, but it will give me a nice working space, not only for potting, etc., but also for when I'm wanting to demonstrate some things to you guys, because this area is in shade and I really like that. Not so much now on a cool day like today, <laughs> but later I will. So it will not look this messy. It will be finally, it will be finished out. And I think at that point, I will like it that much more. So that is my vision for the remainder of this area. And am I itching to get started on it? Absolutely I am. I have already spoken with Kayla about it and it won't be, and you may say, well, Linda, why didn't you do this before? 
Well, I didn't do it before because I hadn't lived in this space before. I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to use it. And the other thing is, is I had reached the end of my budget by the end of the year, you I was used. Yes, the live and learn. <laughs> I'd used the remainder of my materials, and I just really wasn't quite sure if I went, wanted this to stay, how I wanted this area to really be pressed into use. And that's the thing that informed it. How, and I've already got in my head now, now I know how I'm going to use this space. So now, because my budget has been replenished, <laughs> my coffers have been replenished just a little bit. I can finish this out and it won't be all that expensive. So coming back over here, um, some happy things and some sad things, some things I'm loving and some things I'm not loving so much. So for all of you guys who have been cheering for me to move the rain barrel, <laughs> it is going to be moved. Not because I didn't like the way it looked, not because of any of those kind of aesthetic reasons, but just for some more practical reasons, again, for how I want to use the space. And so it will be, it will be moved and I can kind of plant some more things in this area. But also recall that last year, this was up on a large plant stand. It was huge. This whole area was pretty much consumed. So for those of you, and if you were one, here's my question of the day. If, one, if you were one of the people who really did not like me having, um, having this rain barrel here, comment below, give a big <laughs> shout of hooray. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I am going to be moving it, maybe not for the reasons that you were arguing, <laughs> but nevertheless, it, it, it is going to be moved. Okay, some other things that I am, I am happy about. I now kind of know what I want, I believe I know what I want to do for this wall right here. I, I want to eventually do an espalier of sorts with these Little Miss Figgies. And if you want one, I know so many of you ask me for them. We'll put a link below to the Little Miss Figgy. Um, and I hope to espalier them on this wall so it covers up this blank space. Um, however, because they probably, with these low, low temperatures in the winter, they'll keep dying back, they may never be completely espaliered because I just can't reliably keep them through the winter. Are they still alive? Oh yes, they're still alive, but the profile won't continue to grow so that I'll have a good espalier. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but okay, okay. So, but what I am going to do is I have some, some I have an idea for some structures that I am going to build here, some wooden structures upon which they can kind, they can kind of grow but that will fill this space and look good year round. And Stuart, re remind me, I will try to find that picture to show you to insert it here. If not, I promise I will show you what it looks like a little bit later. Yes, it will be wood and yes, it will be painted in, um, in this, this same Vauder Cottage gray, but that way it will complete this wall and it won't look so bereft. The other thing that will complete this whole area is, um, I did have another planter box built for here, and that will be in place. So this whole wall will look kind of, kind of finished. Now, a happy thing here is finally, it has, I, I don't ever remember the tulips being this slow in coming up, and I'm not, sh I'm not exactly sure why, but I am finally seeing evidence of them come up back here. Can you see that, Stuart? Yes, I am seeing evidence of them coming up back here and there will be clumps at varying areas surrounding this patio and so it should be really beautiful when they are in bloom. Okay, so that's a happy thing. Another happy thing is, I can't believe it, but I think this Silverado Sage not only did not die, but I think it's alive all the way up to the tippy tip of its, its um, canopy. So I'm hoping it did not die back and it will continue to grow and at least I'll have it for another year and there is signs of new growth coming in at the bottom. So that was a surprise to me. That really was a surprise to me. Another sad thing, however, is I'm not sure about 
these Roman candle podocarpus because they didn't get in real early either. And I think had they been established, they might have made it. But I'm very, very sad about this. However, there's a little bit of green tip. This may be one of those cases where I wait for a little while. And if these, if these didn't make it, I'll probably come in here with some other kind of option. What that option is, I am not sure, but something that will ground both of these spaces because it looks like I may have lost both of them. Again, I got them in later in the season before they had much of a chance to get their root ball established. But before we get too sad, a happy thing. <laughs> I think my chef's choice rosemary made it, and I did have that covered just with a cardboard box, and I think it's gonna be pretty happy. And then happily, I'll be bringing back a lot of my potted things from the greenhouse. Okay, another thing, and I'll be planting up these raised beds with some cool season vegetables before too long. The other thing that was kind of bothering me is I was feeling like this patio was just a little too crowded. So you'll notice that I took away two chairs and I took those away because I've had those for years and they have finally started to split. So they may just end up at um, in the trash or in the compost pile or something um, because they just really weren't viable anymore. So I have two remaining and then I thought, well, what I probably will do, I'm still cogitating on this, is that I just won't have four here. And when we want to sit around the fire pit, then I can always move these chairs to around the fire pit. And then most of the time when I'm just looking out here, this won't look too congested. The other thing is we'll have the fire pit here probably only in the cool seasons and in when it's really, really hot, we'll probably move it because when it's that hot, we're not adding to that heat in any way at all because it's already, 115 is already hot enough. We don't need to add fuel to the fire to get my, to, if you get my metaphor. So, um, so I'm thinking about that, but overall I've been really just, I don't like looking out the back and seeing, um, even though we've made a lot of progress, I don't like the way it's been looking. And so I feel like this spring, I'll be able to really finalize it and getting it look, looking the way I want with good bones. I'm kind of, I'm having a hard time expressing that, but so that it will be satisfactory to me when I look out and I'll be content. Okay, let's, oh, the other things, let me just talk about the other things. I think they're all doing fine. Thrilled with the Dragon Prince Cryptomeria and um, the Pancake Arbor Vita. Everything else I think looks pretty good. A lot of it needs a trim. That's this stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's these rounded, mounded things. And yeah, some of them have a little bit of winter bronzing and such, but I'll give them a trim and a good feed and I think they will be just fine. Like I say, it was a really, really hard January. So that's what's going on back here. I continue to love the placement of my little shed. Yes, we'll put a link below to the little shed. I continue to love it being there. And then I think I told you I'm gonna get another storage box for back here, um, like the one I've got in front. So these are just some things I'm thinking about. Give me your, your thoughts on that. I can't wait to dress up all of my plant stands with blooming things and with color because right now it looks very sad and very devoid of color, just like the garden in general. Now let's move to the front and I'll show you some more things I'm loving. Now here is something, a lot of you have asked me, do I really miss the old house? Do I miss the old garden? Well, overall, no, I've, I've been so thrilled with this. I haven't had a chance to miss it, but I will admit that this time of year, I am really, really missing my stand of hellebores because I had a massive stand of hellebores in the front under that big oak tree and I don't have them right now. Now I do have some tiny little hellebores getting started and I've got in my head some other areas where I'll be planting them. Can you see them right there? So, yeah. yeah, and they're starting to send up new growth, but I don't have any blooms. They're just not mature enough. Here's another one here. I need to tidy up the foliage, but, um, but that is one thing I am definitely missing. 
Obviously, I will miss the explosion of white in the Chinese snowball viburnum. However, what makes me feel somewhat better is the fact that I have huge succulent buds on this one. I mean, they have already started to fill out this whole bush. Granted, it's going to be smaller, but it is going to be resplendent in those, in those white blooms. It'll be so fun when the kids walk back and forth to school. Can you see? Yeah, from a distance, just how many there are yeah, and how everywhere. big the buds are getting and none of them froze out. So that makes me, that makes me very, very happy. And as does my bank of Encore Azaleas, which also made it. And I think, I think I'm starting to see some bud formation on that. So that makes me, that makes me happy. I need to do a lot more work on the hydrangeas. But Stuart, come join me up here on the upper terrace because I want to point out to you guys um, some other stuff that's, that's coming up a little bit more vigorously since I saw you last. This pot, I was a little bit concerned because I did not put this pot under cover. I didn't put it in the garage like the other ones. So I wasn't sure if any of these tulips would rot out and freeze out, but indeed they are not. They're coming up just fine. And one thing I am noting and recording in my garden journal is the progression in which they are coming up because they're coming up slowly and i don't know which ones have already erupted and which ones are still in the soil waiting to come up so if i look for example the ones on this end are coming up faster than the ones on that end to the east and so i'll record that because that pattern is also somewhat similar in other areas of my garden and it keeps me from stressing out if I don't see tulips coming up in certain places. If I watch the pattern with which they are starting to break the surface, then that'll keep me from being a little bit more nervous um, next year. Boy, they are really coming up in here. And you can see I still, it turned pretty rainy after our last walkabout last week, even snowy, and I, which it did not hurt anything because it never, it barely even got below freezing, if at all. And so I still haven't top dressed this with compost, but I will. But I wanna show you something that really makes me happy. One of my favorite things and one of my signature plants, I think, is this golden fever few. And I, I cut it all back because it was, it had lots of browning on it and I cut it back and these tufts will be so sweet surrounding the patio. And also I, actually with Stuart, who helped me put <laughs> these, these Encore Azalea topiaries back in place and they weathered that little bit of snow, they weathered that just fine. They actually, I think, kind of liked it. These pots that were in the garage, they are really starting to come up. The tulips in these pots are really starting to come up. The ones in the ground seem to be, yeah, there, aren't they fun? And, and I'm not exactly sure right now where I'm going to place them. Um, Why are these seemingly so much darker? Well, uh, they're different varieties. So when they come up, some of them come up red, some of them come up green, and the different varieties have their own peculiarities. Um, but these tulips in the ground, these are coming up so much more slowly yeah. than the ones in the pots, and, and really much more slowly than they came up in my, in my other garden. Why is that? Number one, um, it could just be the weather that we've had. Number two, the orientation to the sun, to the street, to areas of warmth, like the brick around the edges and the sidewalk, all of that will play a role in how fast your tulips erupt, all of which I will then note in my garden journal. The other thing I've noticed is that some sides are coming up faster than the, uh, than the other side. Um, even here, 
because I've got some planted along the walkway. Even here, it seems like this side, they're erupting a little bit more quickly than on this side. Why that is, I don't know. But again, those are things I'm going to note so that in future years, I don't worry when I don't see evidence of the bulbs coming up. The other thing is, these were, these were all planted in really fresh new soil with very little root competition. Because of that, they were planted more deeply, which I think will serve me well. At the other house underneath that tree, there was so much root competition from the tree itself and the shrubs that it was hard to get them planted very deeply. And so they, I think, erupted that much more quickly, or at least I think that's what may be a consideration. So I, I am continuing to, now that it's kind of dried out after the last rain, I am going to start feeding all of my violas and uh, my pansies. I'm gonna keep feeding those. You'll notice that there's golden fever few. Also along here, which will be so dear once the tulips come up, and by the way, there are so many perennials and things in here that have yet to break the surface, so this won't be one big barren area. There are lots of things in here that will begin to... Yeah, it's a rare um, time to see it. So yeah, it's yeah, it, it is weird because it was so full last year. Now, something else that I did was about a month ago, actually, I seeded some more golden fever few along this edge because I had more of it over there and I wanted, I wanted its presence on this side too. And lo and behold, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I came out yesterday and I love I, there is telltale evidence. Can you see that little yellow darling right there? That little sweet thing? Yeah, can, okay, can you see that tiny, <laughs> yeah. tiny, tiny little thing? Look. Wait, there, you saw that from somewhere? Oh, yeah, because I get down on my hands and knees and I look for them. <laughs> I mean, you really need to have glasses. Okay, look. Can you see? Yeah. There's several there. There's one there. I mean, these are minute, these are yeah. tiny, oh, tiny. God. But the thing is, they just needed that moisture and then a little bit of room to germinate. And so pretty soon, oh, there's one, there's one. Well, yeah, I've started to see more of them. Yes. I know what to look for. Now, yes. And, and the difference is these are, even at this tiny stage, they're very golden. They're not a green like, like the regular green would be. Now, as you can see, I've started to cut back more stuff. I feel comfortable doing that now that it's, it's, it's drying out. So I'm gonna be cutting back more of the Budlia. Here is one pot that has me kind of nervous and maybe I just need to watch it. Um, but these tulips aren't coming up as fast as the tulips in that other pot maybe because it's above ground and that one was, was submerged, but I am slowly starting to see some of these. And then once they're finished, I'll put one of those Eugenia topiaries back in here. So here's something that's kind of fun. I started to cut this back yesterday as I was cleaning up leaves. And then I thought, you know what? And I don't know if I can do this or not. I don't have printers with me. But I thought it might be make a fun bouquet to bring inside of just nothing but some of this gray stuff. And even if it began to dry, if I if I really it's just gray, yeah, it'll gray out more and get kind of crisp, but it could be a fun dried arrangement. So give me your thoughts on that, you guys. Let me know what you think. So before I just cut it back and discarded these branches, I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll make a bouquet out of them. What is that again? This is, oh, this is just common Dusty Miller. Okay. And it's, it comes back every year. And you can see here, let me show you, let me get on my hands and knees over here, Stuart, and show oh, you. There we go. <laughs> Hey, okay. I'd rather hit that than the tulips. Than the tulips. Oh, me too. And, 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 and hopefully you didn't break a leg. Okay, but look here. Here's one I cut back. 
Stuart, we need to be better about moving that stuff out of your way before we I... We don't know where we're headed. So well, we don't, and I get so excited. <laughs> okay, so here, shot. so this is, this is okay. the same thing over here. I just cut this one back, and then it will be more clumped and less, and less straggly. That... Yeah, that's already some new growth. It was probably starting to come out, and it was covered up with the old foliage, so now it's fine. And... So that's that's yeah, the show them what I hit so they have an idea. Okay, yeah. That's where we yes. So it sounded worse than it was. Yeah, it sounded worse than it was. <laughs> and no broken bones and no broken lanterns. I just couldn't get my foot all the way. Yeah, the yeah. Yes. And sometimes I take Stuart's dexterity for granted <laughs> at how how easily he can navigate around this stuff and I'm not very thoughtful. Uh, but yeah, there's more tulips in here. And then um, I still haven't started tri trimming on these outdoor topiary boxwood yet, but I want to show you something. So I've been, I've been itching to clip this off, but I didn't want to clip it off because I wanted to show you that this is how you make another tier on a boxwood topiary. So you have your one tier and then then you have another tier. And then this could be a third tier. I could continue to let it grow vertically. Then when it reached the height I wanted it to reach, I could just pinch it off and then it would start forming another ball. The foresight involved cool. Yeah, yes, there is foresight involved. And that's sometimes also the reason that topiary can be expensive, especially boxwood topiary. Um, now, sometimes you could also, the time it took to get there and and not only that the time it took for the shape to transform so I could have a boxwood that was already this tall and trim it into three separate balls but even then the balls wouldn't be really uniform and it would take some time so um, but these weathered they weathered all of the bad weather they weathered the bad weather <laughs> and they um, they just need I, they just need to look crisp, so I need to do that, and I will. And pretty soon, there will be annuals and things starting to show up that, that like the cool weather, and I'll be able to fill my urns again. And next year, next year I'll probably make some subtle changes so that in the winter, it doesn't look so sad. I will say, in my defense, however, that from the street, it really doesn't look that bad. You kind of can't see how brown and barren the upper terrace looks. All you see is kind of pretty grass in the front and that there's another level up here and the charm of the cottage. And then pretty soon, over time, as the boxwood villages grow, they'll provide more evergreen structure and you will see them and you won't kind of see the barren blank areas in the middle much at all. And that's, that's okay with me. The other thing is, is I know what's to come. So it, it, it doesn't look quite as sad as it could otherwise. There are so many seedlings of Larkspur, of Cleome, of Feverfew. I'm hoping some poppies that I sowed. Um, there's even some more different kinds of sages that I have seen evidence of, little seedlings, lots of Minoan lace, which is the tinier version of the Queen's Anne's lace. These are things that I have talked about before, but now I just want you to know that I am seeing evidence of them, little tufts everywhere. And boy, once it's reliably warm, and we start getting even more moisture. And by the way, you guys, we are above average in moisture so far this year, uh -oh. which is just, <laughs> that's a good no. Thing. Oh, that's not an uh-oh. Oh, I did that in a good way. Yeah. That, is a one, <laughs> that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. I think all of my white wedding hydrangeas completely sailed through the winter. I'm glad about that. And then finally, I want to show you one last really, really fun project that you guys might want to do along with me. I'm probably going to be doing it this week because spring comes early, or excuse me, since Easter comes early this spring, I'm doing this earlier than I normally would. So if you come around here, 
to my side kind of storage area. Okay. By the way, this is that wonderful box that I love so much. I'm going to get another one for the back. But look here. This is my project. Now, I can't start on it until this very, 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 very heavy pot gets moved to the front where it will get some sun. But I'm going to fill it up with soil and I am going to then plant some Easter grass in this concrete Easter basket. I've done that before, uh, but in the past, I think I planted bulbs and stuff in here. This year, I want nothing but Easter grass and then I'm going to tuck some other little bloomers in there. So I got some of this grass seed. And I actually, yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'll show them yeah, yeah, <laughs> isn't that cute? And then I'm also going to plant some individual I little pots. One. Yeah, I'm going to plant some, and yes, it has kind of rusted, and you know what? It's kind of cool. I know, I kind of like that. Um, so then I might have at my table, I might have little individual pots of grass at each table. Um, each person's place setting. I'm not sure about that, but I'm going to fill both of these and I'm going to grow some grass seed. And it likes this kind of weather. So I just need to get this out in the sun. And then one last tip I wanted to give you because I'm still kind of, I'm still disorganized here. I'm still re having to remember where I put things. Um, my very sad, because it broke, um, but my mosquito bits, these are wonderful right now if your indoor plants, your amaryllis, your, any of your topiaries are starting to show, so, show signs of fungus gnats. This stuff is great. Just sprinkle it along the, the surface. Some people have even told me that they make kind of an elixir. They just submerge some of it in water and then they pour the water around on their plants. But this stuff is great if you've got fungus gnats in addition to deterring mosquitoes. And then it's been a while since I've showed you these little topiaries. These were the ones, Stuart, do you recognize them? Oh, yeah. That I dug up, they were like this big that I shopped in my own garden and I dug these up and I've been and I've been forming them and they are right outside my kitchen window. We so might have photos of these as babies. I think we do probably have photos, but I just, I love them. I think I'm gonna plant some things around the base. So that is just some things I'm loving, some things I'm not loving so much on this day of love, Valentine's Day. I'll try to put all of the links below. In the meantime, you guys have just a wonderful, wonderful afternoon and evening, and, and hopefully you are spending it with a loved one. So there you go. I got to spend this morning with some of my loved ones, you and Leah. So yeah, so there you go. You guys have a happy Valentine's Day and we'll see you soon.